<clears throat> well, hi, everybody. It's uh, meteorologist Joe Chaffee on uh, tonight's version of the Joe and Joe Weather Show. And uh, Joe will be here uh, momentarily. He's just uh, taking care of a few things. Uh, so uh, I figured I'd jump on ahead of time. We'll get the audience going and uh, we'll uh, start to look at this uh, impending storm that is coming in for Thursday night and for Friday. Uh, and it is going to be, it's going to have impact. So uh, if you are traveling, uh, a, a lot of folks are, you know, going to airports, you're going to be going to one place or another. But I just want to specifically point out the uh, state of Florida because uh, we do have a, uh, an enhanced risk of severe weather for Central and South Florida for Thursday. And this will be for later Thursday into Thursday night. So <clears throat> if you're either flying there or perhaps you have folks flying out of Florida and heading up uh, into uh, our neck of the woods, anticipate weather-related travel delays and you can anticipate weather-related travel delays uh, for Thursday night, for Friday, into Friday night, and even on Saturday, uh, even though the rain will be long gone by then, uh, we are going to be dealing with some uh, strong winds from the west and northwest, and I'm imagining that that also is going to be causing some uh, weather-related travel delays. So, uh, as I said, Joe will be out in a moment. Let me just take this opportunity to alert you to two things. Uh, first off, if you haven't already, uh, if you have an Android device, uh, you can download my uh, free weather app on uh, Google Play. And uh, this will give you easy access to my website posts. Uh, you can also watch live streams on it, uh, YouTube live streams. Uh, you'll get notifications when uh, uh, new weather forecasts are out and when they're updated. Uh, so uh, if, you're, if you'd like, it's absolutely free. Uh, I have a link on the descriptor to this video and I will put it on the chat board as well. I would just ask that uh, if you do uh, download it and you do like it, uh, consider uh, adding my uh, subscription platform. Uh, so this is, goes a long way. It's two bucks a month and it helps support me. Uh, it helps support me with the app uh, and uh, keeping it uh, updated and adding new things. We're doing an update right now. We're working on it technically and hopefully we'll have that done in the next couple of weeks. So I just want uh, to bring that out to you. If you have an iPhone, you're going to have to wait a little while longer. Still trying to resolve some technical issues with uh, our uh, buddies at Apple. But hopefully uh, we will have that uh, happening in short order. So Mr. Rayo has now joined us. Is he done, or do you have one no, more to do? Oh, he's not done yet. All we right. Had, we, had a, we had a technical problem. You had a glitch. So I have to just unglitch this. All right. So he's while he's unglitching, I have my own glitch here because it figures tonight I can't see uh, your comments. So I'm going to try and read them. Uh, all right. Bill Ferberger, Ferberger. Oh, hey, I hope I'm saying that right. Southern New England snow, is it ever coming? Be patient. Okay, uh, be patient. Uh, this is uh, not unusual for December, by the way. We've had many Decembers where we've gotten little or no snow. And uh, right now it looks as if this may be another one, but that hasn't, doesn't necessarily mean that the rest of the winter is going to be one that doesn't ha uh, feature a lot of snow. Uh, the two don't always go together. Uh, I would uh, remind you that it was December of 2014 uh, that had <clears throat> hardly any snow. And in fact, the first inch of snow uh, in this area did not fall until I think it was about January 4th or 5th. Okay. Uh, then came the famous uh, half and then the bottom fell out after that. Uh, as we uh, move through uh, uh, the second half. So uh, just bear that in mind. Uh, we, uh, so it, it doesn't necessarily follow that what you're seeing now is what you're going to see uh, in a few weeks. And in fact, we are seeing you know, things going on in the high layers of the atmosphere that would suggest that uh, we are going to get into a very interesting wintertime pattern uh, before too long. So uh, just again, you got to be patient with this sort of stuff. I'm just trying to understand why I can't see the comments today. You know, I've, it figures. I'm trying to read them through. The, they're all grayed out for some reason. Uh, let me try one more thing. Uh, let's see if we can do it this way. Uh, 
All right, I'm actually, all right, we're doing it this way, but this might work. Okay, Howie Dwyer, buddy, we got to have breakfast to talk to the buzz, man, okay, to make some time here. Jason Schaefer, uh, good to see you uh, on board. Uh, Matt Boder, nice, Matt. Uh, you have the only weather station in the Selden area. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not too far from there. Uh, one of these days, let me know when you're, when you're around. We can uh, meet up. Robert Matthew Policasto, nice to, uh, to see you on board tonight. And Scott Briller, of course, all the YouTube folks are now uh, joining here on the YouTube cast. Uh, are you done? Yes, I'm done. Oh, Lareo is here. He's very difficult. Um, all right, so just anyway, uh, here I can actually now I can see. They changed the uh, way the, the comments are visible on here, and, and uh, I figured out a way to see them. So this is good. All right, so we're going to start talking about this uh, storm, Joe. You get in your chair. Uh, and we'll get things going. I uh, uh, we got a very uh, couple of things, very interesting things I want to po point out. We I was talking about this with regards to uh, folks traveling around. Uh, I seem to have misplaced it, but uh, we do have uh, a severe weather threat tomorrow uh, for the state of Florida, and I want to bring that up. But in the meantime, let me just bring this satellite picture up. We could you know d describe what's on the loop and. Uh, it, it's it's getting pretty hefty here with this this uh, this upper air feature that's driving the southern part of this uh, this weather system. Well, the comma that you were talking about yesterday on the the comma signature on the satellite is now uh, moved or shifted eastward now into the uh, lower Mississippi Valley, and um, uh, we're thinking that uh, that storm, the main storm, is going to pass off to our west. First uh, raindrops, at least uh, in much of the tri-state area, probably sometime in the late afternoon, uh, or I, I've been saying at least for the lower Hudson Valley, maybe a few uh, renegade rain showers popping up as early as 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. By 5 o'clock, it's pretty well a, a, a done deal, I think. Just about everybody will be seeing some sort of rain, and then it really begins to rev up tomorrow night. I... Uh, I was looking at one model, I think it was the GFS, that was uh, suggesting that between 1 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, this is the 12Z run, that some some parts of our area could have as much as 2 inches of rain. In oh, it wouldn't be a shocker, and I think it's probably going to come with some strong winds along the Jersey coast and the right. south shore of Long Island. I think we could see some gusts of 50 miles an hour, maybe even a bit more than that, uh, with uh, you know that, that peak time frame. And then it looks like it might get a little more showery as we go through the day. But you know, before we go, uh, we go to that. Let me let me bring up. Uh, there's a lot of folks I mentioned earlier. You know, there's a lot of folks this time of year, with with the holidays and all. Either they're <clears throat> they're heading down to Florida, or they're come. They have friends coming we, up from Florida. We all know what Miami is. Miami is the sixth borough. That's correct. So uh, here's the uh, Storm Prediction Center, and you don't usually see this too often, Joe, in uh, December. But they've got. <clears throat> almost virtually all of Central and South Florida at a slight risk for severe weather. And they even have an enhanced risk for up and, uh, up and down the east coast of Florida from uh, uh, from about ja just south, you know, south of Jacksonville, but then going all the way down uh, to uh, about Miami, uh, enhanced risk, which you don't see. And also slight risk for the coastal, coastal North Carolina and a very small sliver of the coast of South Carolina with a marginal risk to the west west of the you know, you know, you don't often see that even during the summertime in Florida. Right, right, you don't. It's it's very, very unusual. And here we are now in the middle of December, mid to late December, and we're looking at that uh, that risk of uh, enhanced activity, as you just mentioned, from about Jacksonville south to uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. So that's well, you got this very deep trough. Uh, we'll bring up the new NAM because that should certainly be out far enough where we can uh, look at what's going on there. And we'll just let the maps load here, folks. But uh, on the new NAM, and okay, let me so you guys can see the date and time. Uh, so that's in Greenwich Mean Time. So this is um, this is the old run. One more time, Joe. Okay. There we go. No, I was talking to myself. Now we're <laughs> out to. Uh... All right, so we're we're we're, <clears throat> we're out to uh, uh, Saturday night. So. Here's the deal for tomorrow as this low really revs up. You've got the bottom part of this upper trough is so strong 
Uh, look at that snaking line. You don't see the NAM do this too often, so you, when it does, you want to pay attention. This snaking line of storms that forms in the in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and just could come slamming inland across the panhandle of Florida through uh, Georgia, southeastern Georgia. And wow. look at that. Wow. That's 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 uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, with I we got I got to look a little deeper in terms of what the NAM is doing, but this brings this is going to be severe weather uh, with. This, there's definitely going to be some a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings now, what with is, this. What does the three kilometer do with that? That's a good question. Uh, I'll switch in a second, but just to watch us. <clears throat> uh, there's your rain, as you said, right. uh, in terms of timing overnight. Uh, then you get this is actually the NAM may be a little bit slower, but actually it looks like we even get some thunderstorms running around here right. on uh, Friday morning into the early afternoon. Oh, Long Island, southern New England, uh, and then. Uh, Everything starts to shift to the east and moves away. So that takes us, by the way, to 4 a.m. Uh, I keep thinking for some reason, by the way, my, I'm a day time? off. No, I keep thinking for some reason I have it in my head that today's Thursday when it's Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Maybe because I'm, I'm waiting for Saturday so when I get to see my grandson as a, you know they're coming up for the weekend. Right. But um, no matter. So uh, let's go to that three-kilometer NAM. And we'll back it up here. There's already some rain coming ashore into Florida, but right. there's the there's the line on the three kilometer NAM. Uh, it's one of these instances. Right. Actually, it looks like almost that the twelve kilometer NAM actually looks more impressive than the three. Usually, the three is is right. better with the thunderstorms. Not right. always, though. Right. But the bottom line is, if you're if you're headed to Florida or you got folks coming up from Florida or the southeast part of the U.S. and and they're coming into airports, there are going to be delays. There are going to be delays going out of all the New York airports going up and down the north, the uh, uh, the East Coast Friday, and I think also on Saturday, Joe, because you're going to get, you know, you're still going to have strong winds, only they'll be coming from the other right. direction, right. and I think that's going to have impact. And of course, also whatever happens on Friday is going to carry over uh, and delay flights into uh, at least part of Saturday as well. So it's going to be a rough uh, rough day indeed for a lot of travelers. We don't often think about the uh, the, the uh, weekend before Christmas as uh, heavily traveled. We always put the emphasis on uh, the day before Thanksgiving or the uh, Sunday coming after Thanksgiving. But this is a big weekend, a big travel weekend, since it, indeed we have Christmas Eve on Monday and Christmas Day on Tuesday. So a lot of people who would make sense will try to get out uh, beginning yes, on everybody, Friday. A lot of people have five day week, four or five day four or five day weekends, or they have all next week off. Here's the rainfall, by the way, which I think you're going to see some variability because of the convective nature of what's happening, especially as we get into Friday. But certainly could be every bit of two to three inches in most places. Right. And there might even be some locally higher amounts if you get a spot where one of these thunderstorms, you know, just sits there right. uh, for uh, for an hour or so. Well, if you get... Um, um, uh, uh, oh, God. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I know the brain cells fa mine are fading too. Training, right? training. Right. That's that's what I was looking yes. for. Yes, groping for the word there. Uh, huh. Yeah, if we get a little bit of that, you'll 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 certainly uh, see uh, excessive excessive amounts of rain. I uh, I do not I do not envy any of you uh, in the Hudson Valley who have to get to work or get to school via a parkway that has a body of water attached to it, because this looks like something on Friday morning where a lot of those places, the Bronx River Parkway, the Hutch, the Sawmill River Parkway, Sprain Brook Parkway, all of these places look like they're going to have some, some uh, issues come Friday morning. Starting to wonder whether I might, maybe should stay up here, to, up here tomorrow night and not and avoid it might, driving. It might, might not know, be a bad idea. Because have you, you've, have you ever been on the – well, of course you have. On the, I've been on oh, the, the – Oh, well, I, I, I have to take – got to be on the Cross Island and the Hutch right. at, at one point or another on my drive. So And that, that one exit, exit 12 on the Hutch, that's in Mount Vernon, which turns into a lake. Yeah, don't worry. It, it may, I'm, I may seriously consider just – hanging around here in Westchester tomorrow night. Oh, you can come to my house. Oh, thank you so much. But then I have to drive down 684 in the pouring rain. No, I don't take 684. I take the Taconic. Uh, you no. Know, I appreciate that. I'm not doing the Taconic. <laughs> not on, not with my car. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that. But uh, I still stay at Mom's. 
Um, well, you're I, only five minutes away then. That's right. I'm on, exactly. Yeah. So here we go with uh, the wind. That was the other issue. And again, I think Friday night into Saturday morning, uh, we're definitely going to see gales along the coast. I think the NAM might be underdoing the wind a, bit, a little bit, uh, at least from the profile on this map. You know, it's, it's showing t these are sustained winds of up to 20 to 35 knots. I suppose that, you know, there will be gales, but I think there could be some gusts up to uh, um, 40 or 50 miles an hour along the immediate coast of both Long Island and New Jersey, and it may come with some coastal flooding. I think, I think, and also for, for, our, for our viewers who are land lovers or are further inland, I think a lot of the heavy winds will be mainly confined to the coast. I think once you go inland a ways, it'll be breezy. But, but it won't be, be crazy. I agree with you. Wind, you know? I agree with you. And uh, as far as uh, after Saturday, Friday's done with the rain, the, the precip is done. Uh, there's some lake effect stuff that goes on way up in western PA and southwest New York. But the gradient is still pretty tight Saturday morning into the afternoon with the low to the northeast and, you know, a high that's just kind of nosing its way into South Dakota. I mean, the gradient will be tight enough that there probably will be some gusty winds on the back side of this until we see some genuine improvement. So what's, what's the upper, upper wind flow look like on, uh, now this is the 12 kilometer again. Yes. So here's, here's, look how deep this trough is, Joe. Yeah. It's phased together. The southern part of that trough is just, you know, very impressive. And you've got this, you know, when we talk about the tilt of the trough, this is, negative at this tilt. point, is neutral going negative. But when it's like this, the flow in, on the east of it is pretty much straight south. Right. And the flow on the west side is almost pretty much straight north. And, you know, you get, this is, this is why you're getting these big thunderstorms that are going to be, you know, that cold pool aloft goes all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico. You don't see that, that you don't see that too often. Yeah. And then, as like you said, it goes negative. It goes northwest to southeast. See, now, now right there, right, what, what is this now? This is, this is uh, 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon. Okay, so that's going to be the time when both the uh, surface winds and the upper level winds are going to uh, match. teleconnect and match. And that's when, in the afternoon hours, <clears throat> You may find the temperatures going down rather precipitously, so it may still feel rather mild first part of the day on Saturday, but then down go the temperatures as the winds both aloft and also at the surface match up uh, later in the day and, on Saturday. And by the way, speaking of temperatures, um, let's bring up um, the, uh, the, the, the temperatures on the NAM, which on, I see, I can't see that well. But it definitely gets, you know, it's going to get to 60. It's going to get into the 60s, assuming right. that we don't have some crazy thing happen where the, um, you know, the only way I see it not getting there is if we hold an easterly component to that wind for mm -hmm. a longer period of time. If it's more south-southeast, then I think we're probably going to, you know, hit a wall somewhere around 60. Right. But if we the wind is south uh, or, or, or south southwest. Certainly, if it's south, you got to get away from the ocean and away from of Long Island. But if you start to get to more of a south southwest wind uh, during um, during Friday, uh, you're definitely going to see temperatures in the 60s and maybe even well up into the 60s. Well, so you you're catch see, a bit of a break. You're going to see temperatures tomorrow afternoon in the mid 40s, and then they're just going to go shooting upward tomorrow night. In fact, I pointed out on uh, my <clears throat> excuse me. I pointed out on my seven-day uh, graphic, my three-day and my seven-day graphic, I told everybody, look at Friday. My Friday, um, excuse me, my Thursday outlook had a high of 46, mm -hmm. and tomorrow night I had like 54. I said, do you notice something? I said, the temperatures tomorrow night are going to be higher than what we're going to have tomorrow afternoon. Well, at 61 mm -hmm. on, on, on Friday. We can, see the Nam, we can see how the NAM does that if you follow um, you know, the colors here. You go from the darker green to the yellows. Uh, where, where it's temperatures in the 60s, but this is at 7 o'clock tomorrow night where they're showing a number of 37 at Poughkeepsie. That, I think, might be a little bit low, but uh, you're right. They rise all night until we get to Friday morning at 7 a.m., and it's um, 55 there is what the NAM is spitting yeah. out. So it could, it, 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 it certainly, this is warm tropical air that is coming up the coast. Right. And then, as you said, after about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, when the upper trough start comes through and, and those winds line up, you start to get into the colder air, and that colder air is showing 20s, 
uh, back through Pennsylvania and through upstate New York. And, and you know, we're going to get that cold air feeding in uh, for the rest of the weekend and into next week. And uh, now the question is for all of the traditionalists out there who uh, are hoping for either a white Christmas Eve or a white Christmas Day, we've been going back and forth on this, saying yes, no, yes, no, maybe. Uh, yesterday it looked like the door was almost completely shut, just a little bit of a crack, but now um, the European, which has been the most consistent, is even more suggested that we might have a little of the white well, stuff. Well, you know, let me ask you, I, I didn't get a chance, I, I only had a chance to um, uh, do a, a, a brief look at today's um, ensembles, and I, I heard you. I heard you when you said you were taking a look at them. When I did my brief look, I could not find no. uh, a, anything uh, from even the European ensembles. From what little I get to see of those uh, that are available publicly, I'm just wondering that operational model just seems to be standing on on its own. And for those of you who have, don't haven't seen my earlier posts, as I wrote up all about it, uh, it, <clears throat> it basically has a system coming out of the uh, middle Mississippi Valley, a little short wave trough with a little bit of a low that moves along and it winds up producing a stripe of one to three, two to four inch snows uh, for, for much of New Jersey to southern New England, the Hudson Valley, uh, cross back through Pennsylvania. And then as you go back through Pennsylvania and toward Ohio and Illinois, Indiana, it's producing some five, six, seven, eight inch amounts there. But it's the only model that's even yeah. remotely doing this. And, and the problem, Joe, I think, is that you always look, the, the old saying, the trend is your friend. Right. There hasn't been a trend as far as the European. First, the European was putting more of an emphasis on maybe a late Sunday night, Monday morning event. Then it backed away on that. Then it started putting more of an emphasis on uh, a, uh, a Monday, Monday night, Tuesday. Tuesday. Now it's Tuesday night, Wednesday, and, or and, late Tuesday and, and, and into also, Wednesday. And position-wise, they've had it to the south, then they brought it up north, then they brought it up west or whatever. It's been it's been trying to, to make something out of something, but as you pointed out, and, and indeed the ensembles don't really show all that much. It's the operational part of the uh, European, and it's the only model really that's showing anything or screaming out, "Hey, you know, watch out for Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday for some snow." So it's it's still kind of a little bit of a mystery here. Yeah, and you know what, the GF. If you want to talk about the trend being your friend and consistency, at least the GFS that model. And the parallel GFS both have been consistently showing nothing. Uh, I did look at the Canadian today, which I probably should not have done, because <laughs> as far as the longer range goes for later next week, it has a completely different view. While the European and the GFS have it getting warm, you know, warming up again to some degree later next week ahead of the next weather system, the Canadian has actually the exact opposite because there's a cold front coming through here on Wednesday and has a and has a high coming down out of Canada for the end of next week. I don't know what's you know. I, I, the only thing I'm wondering is we talked about last night this big stratospheric warming event that's going to be going on, and we noticed last year during long stretches where we had the atmosphere kind of stretched to extremes that when that starts to happen, models start to get a little quirky. Antsy. Quirky, yeah, they yeah. just like they they just start doing things and 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 being very volatile. I mean, they do change from run to run, but in some in, in the, during that there were a number of times in long stretches last year where we saw almost these radical changes right. back and forth. And I'm just wondering whether some of these models are kind of sniffing out that there's going to be some sort of major atmospheric up, upheaval. Right. Ne later next week and going into the new year and are, are starting to have a tough time f figuring things out. Right. Just a just just a, a guess the on models, my part. The models have their own uh, way. And, of course, there's also more members on the European. They have 51 members that go into the ensemble. Meanwhile, the Canadian and the uh, GFS have only, what, 21 or 22? That may have a say. And then again, it'll be even more fun as we move into the weekend and we get within range for the NAM to start throwing its two cents in and seeing what it does with uh, with this potential for Monday through Wednesday of next week. Um, Ryan Hastava asked me, you know, with how f the coastal flooding for Friday uh, on, on the south shore of Long Island. Well, you know, you got this full moon on Saturday, so our tides are going to be rising into that full moon cycle. Uh, the south wind is a little bit of a concern uh, because we're going to start to see that wind from the south beginning tomorrow morning. It's not going to really pick up until tomorrow night into Friday morning, but 
Now that water is going to do a little bit of piling there. So I wonder if there, you know, we'll probably, I would think we should see at least some minor to possibly some pockets of moderate coastal flooding. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to look at this a little closer tomorrow, uh, but that would be an early guess on, on my part. Freeport and uh, places like Lindenhurst. South yeah, a, a lot of these places now flood, you know, since Sandy. I mean, if you live in those areas, easier. you're used to it. You're used now. to it, so you know. So yeah. I, I would, you know, I would just prep if you're if you're down there on the South Shore. Frank uh, La Salandra asking about Killington, Vermont, holding on with all of this. This is going to be rain all the way up, right. even past Caribou right. and into New Brunswick. Right. Uh, this is uh, there, there's no cold air anywhere. A cold air, the Pacific has kind of flooded the United States and southern Canada with relatively mild air, and that's where we're going to be with this this entire uh, storm system. This is going to be very interesting. Uh, I remember the superstorm in 1993, which, uh, of course, was snow down in the deep south. But I also remember that ahead of the storm system, there was a lot of severe uh, thunderstorm activity in parts of the southeast, like Florida. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of reminds me what's coming their way tomorrow with this skinny... With the, the deep trough like deep that, trough and, and the deep yeah. trough. Yeah, I mean, what you're missing if, uh, with it is the Arctic connection. Right. You don't have a, a, a polar jet from Canada that's connecting with this. And, uh, and, and as a result, there's no snow anyway. Mm -hmm. that, that was one of, you know, kind of a remarkable thing given the time of year. And it does happen from time to time. It's not that unusual. But just that, you know, we're talking about uh, weather-related travel delays for the weekend going into Christmas. And none of the issues involved uh, are with frozen or freezing precipitation. Correct. And we're talking about springtime phenomena, rain, uh, wind, thunderstorms, and everything that goes with that. And I've often said, Joe, uh, and it's just the nature of the beast, at least in the lower Hudson Valley, and especially if you live in Westchester County, um, I've often said that I think that it is worse during uh, flooding events as opposed to snow or ice for Westchester because, again, at least during a snow event or an ice event, you can just wait a few hours, let the guys do their thing with their plows, plow away the snow or get rid of the ice or whatever, and you can resume. But with flooding, yeah, you, especially you, intense you, flooding... You, you can't do that with I mean, you, you're literally shutting down roadways, parkways, for hours upon end, and this is something that I think we may be facing in parts of our area, uh, parts of the Hudson Valley, uh, early on Friday morning. It's going to be a real mess. All right, so I think we might have a little bit more of the NAM out or almost the whole thing. So let's let's see what it tells us. We do have, so at least maybe we can get a an, uh, an early clue or any kind of clue for that matter, just with for Sunday and beyond. Now, we only go out to Sunday morning. So we do see... You know, that's back a, back in the there in the uh, that's a pretty nasty looking uh, shortwave coming through uh, <laughs> Illinois. Uh, well, and this is now this is Sunday, so right. this is not even what the European was dealing with has something looking like this, but it has it for Tuesday. Tuesday. Right. So this is Sunday. So this is the system that's running out ahead. So let's right. see because now the the uh, we the the uh, GFS and the parallel GFS late uh, late this afternoon did bring a sliver of precip here Sunday night or, or, or sometime on Monday. Right. I forgot what the timing was. Well, I mean, you are starting to you you do have a bit of a surface low there. Well, hold on, I'm trying to see why is it not running. Um, how far out? You're 84, Joe. That's yeah, it. no, no. I was running, trying to run it backwards. Okay. Okay. All right, so there's our storm. So we've got some kind of low here dropping down out of central Canada near Lake Winnipeg. Looks like it's moving more east than anything else. So maybe that that. But a lot of but but the models were also saying that while it was semi put together over the Midwest as they came east, it was that the flow would flatten. Well, flatten it out. Now yeah. there's two systems here, so you've got this system. Uh, coming into the western lakes and then there's another system coming into the pacific northwest so i'm guessing that that's what maybe the european is keying on a piece of this for tuesday because i mean if this is sunday you know this is sunday morning right this is going to be long gone you know before you know right for before uh tuesday comes along so it's it's whatever's coming into the pacific northwest i guess that's what the european is keying on so I, I, I think if you're looking for a clue from the NAM about where we're going with regards to any uh, threat, we're not going to get it. So uh, 
that pretty much wraps it up, I guess. Do you have any closing parting thoughts? No. Uh, we already, I mean, last year we did have a white Christmas on uh, Christmas morning. Uh, many uh, places, especially in the Hudson Valley. I was up in Connecticut. I had Connecticut. four and a half, over four inches of snow. It was beautiful. I was, yeah. So I, 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 I don't remember. I'm trying to think the last time we had consecutive white Christmases. Uh, I remember back in the 60s. Believe it or not, I think seven out, of, seven out of ten Christmases had either snow coming down or already had snow on the ground. So, it, you know, it, it certainly is possible and doable, and maybe uh, we should open the door at least a little bit, a crack again for the traditionalists for maybe that uh, Monday through Wednesday time frame of getting a little bit of snow. We'll, we'll see how it all pans out. All right, and uh, we'll be, you and I are both be here tomorrow uh, setting the table for tomorrow night's wind and rain. And I think I may stay up here. It just might make my life a little bit easier. Uh, okay, so we'll wrap it up here at this point. You and I will be back tomorrow night. Yes. Uh, Brian Fitzgerald and Jeff Banson will be on in the morning on Fios 1 That's News. That's Jeff Banson, not Ted Danson. <laughs> God. <laughs> How did you even make that connection? I don't know. But wouldn't it be funny if we had Ted Danson here instead of Jeff for one day? <laughs> <laughs> All right. His hair is as white as yours is. Yeah, I know, I know. All right, so then uh, who's well, next? You've got a lot more money than I do. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, okay, so who's next on the agenda after? Uh, Addison Green. Okay. And Brittany Borer. And then you and I will be back again tomorrow evening, and uh, we'll see how this all pans out. All right, and uh, just a quick reminder to everybody, uh, download my uh, free app for Android. I just put the link up on the chat board. And if you like it, you can consider uh, hooking it up with uh, uh, my uh, Patreon uh, platform. Uh, that uh, it's two bucks a month, and it actually goes to support the uh, the app because I got to put it together and do all the things and maintain it. And we've got an iPhone version coming out uh, as well. So uh, well, as soon as I get the uh, okay from Apple and I get a link from uh, the App Store, uh, I will let you know. Have a great evening, everybody. Joe and I at the top of the hour. He's Hudson Valley. I'm Long Island, New Jersey. We're Fios 1 News, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.